Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Is it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Today's going to be a little bit different, but we're going to have an awesome service. Amen. I believe the Holy Ghost has already started moving in this place today. Amen. If you were able to make it, the prayer room was so full, we were down the halls. Amen. So I'm expecting a great move of God today. Why don't we all stand? We're going to get some preliminaries out of the way real quick. And uh, why don't everybody just say praise the Lord? Amen. Oh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful day to be in the house of God today. Um, what I'd like to do right off, uh, I want to start off with prayer. I know we just came out of prayer, but we're going to let, ask God to have his way today and move in this service. So if you would join with me today. God, we love you. Father, we ask you, Lord, to minister in this house today. God, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it, God. Uh, God, I ask you, God, to move in every heart and every mind. Uh, God, I ask you, Lord, just to have your way in this house, God. Uh, God, we're going beyond just a program today. But, God, we want to be sensitive enough to let you, oh, God, to move in this house, oh, Lord. Uh, God, I ask you to touch every heart and every mind. Uh, Lord, I ask you, God, to minister to the needs of the people today. In Jesus' name, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and take up the offering. And uh, I thank God for his provisions. Amen. I thank God for the blessings of God. He's kept his hand on my family, many of you that I've spoken with, you know, testimonies that we've given. And, and you know, God's just been really good to us. Amen. And I believe that that's a product of giving. He said, give and he shall be given back. Pressed down, shaken together and running over. Amen. And today I know we have some folks in here that are living in the overflow. Amen. You're living in the running over. Praise God. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given to me. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing there's not enough room to receive. We receive jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and incomes, rebates and returns, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessings. I am blessed going in and I'm blessed going out. And all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we go ahead and give unto the Lord right now. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Why don't we give the Lord another hand clap of praise today? Hallelujah. And welcome to our 2018 Christmas service. Praise God. It's a wonderful day to be in the house of God. He is the reason for the season. Amen. And though we're having a program that's good and well, but we're still going to allow the Holy Ghost to have his way in the house. Amen. Didn't we have a move of God last night? Amen. At a Christmas banquet, the Holy Ghost came in this house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So at this time, we're going to change the order of the service. Amen. And um, y'all can be seated if you'd like. And uh, praise God. Let's have a good time.
Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. These prophecies were proclaimed by the prophet Isaiah roughly 700 years before the birth of Jesus. But the plot line of the story has been established much earlier. The New Testament says in reference to Jesus that the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, 8. The God who knows all, looking over eternity, crafted a redemptive plan for humanity, even as he spoke the worlds into existence at the dawn of time. Isaiah God's man of the hour spoke to a generation plagued with idolatry, rebellion, hatred, spite, and sin. Sadly, God's chosen people, the Israelites, had forsaken him, turning to wickedness and their own evil devices. They chose to serve the gods they had made rather than the one who had made them. But God in his mercy sent men with impassioned pleas for repentance. His words were unceasing expressions of unending love. But the messages seemed to fall on deaf ears. These words of compassion uttered by the Spirit of God were met with violence, rejection, and even death. Still, even when cast aside, God's love and compassion endured. Looking at the remnants of Israel's rebellion, he continued to speak through his prophets, promising restoration and peace. But most importantly, God promised a Savior would come, one who would close the chasm of sin that separated a holy creator from his fallen creation. The way maker would make a way. Story of amazing love, light. 
And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when he saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also this holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. became possible. God would become man. Many times in our lives, just like Mary, we may not know how it will happen, but we believe the word of God and know he's able, that there's never been a challenge too hard for God Almighty. In Genesis, he spoke to, spoke to the universe into existence, breathed the breath of life into mankind, and provided a ram in the bush for Abraham. In Exodus, he revealed himself to Moses as the I Am, he is the ultimate provider who confidently says, whatever you need, I am. No situation, no battle, no obstacle, no problem, no challenge or worry is too great for our God. Isaiah 43 and 19 states, he is the one who makes a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He is the one who makes a way when there seems to be no way. There is none that compares to the great I am. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. He is higher than any other. He is our healer, awesome in power. He holds all power in his hand. No sickness is stronger than him. No power is greater than him. No wisdom of man is wiser than him. He is greater.
And it shall come to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee and out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. And suddenly there was, the, was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Outside of the presence of angels, the setting of the greatest story ever told is rather unassuming. It's humbling to recognize the earthiness of the story we know and celebrate. Earthly, it's a word we don't typically associate with the works and wonders of God. But here in Bethlehem, without courts, crowns, or the flowing robes of royalty, the king of the world was born in a barn, his first bed a feeding trough. Surrounded by shepherds, the Lamb of God was born to the poor on the outskirts of the tiniest of tiniest of towns. The great I Am of the Old Testament made himself known in a new way to humanity. The Lord of Lords, driven by love, wrapped the ultimate gift for humanity, himself in flesh. Born to die in order to give us life, trotting the same soil we walk and breathing the same air we breathe. The Waymaker came into the dust, dirt, grime, and clay of real life and made a way. As the miracle worker... He opened blinded eyes and caused the lame to leap. As the promise keeper, he fulfilled prophecy after prophecy as the Messiah who was to come. As the perfect light, he revealed not only the sins of humanity, but a way of escape and a better, what John 10 and 10 says, more abundant way to live. Even the very name of Jesus revealed God's intentions. Its meaning is Jehovah salvation. More literally, it means I am salvation the timeless god the way maker stepped into time manifesting himself to his creation saying what john 14 and 6 says i am the way isaiah quoting him wrote fear not for i have redeemed you i have called you by name you are mine it is I who say to you, fear not, I am the one who helps you. And Isaiah describing him wrote, Who hath believed our report, and who him in his arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And when he hid, as it were, our faces from him, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid him, laid on him the iniquity of us all. 
the way maker made a way. And here today we recognize everything he has done. Zephaniah prophetically stated in Zephaniah 3 and 17, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. The statement which was once true for Israel is true for us today as well. Salvation isn't just for the best of the best. It is also for the worst of the worst and everyone in between. No matter where you stand, the Waymaker is here. He has made a way and like the shepherds 2,000 years ago, let our response be to open our, heart, uh, to open our hearts to bow before the Lord God Almighty and say, Waymaker, we worship you.
But yeah. as we sing this song, I was thinking, and I'm going to be a little transparent. I'm going to be like my pastor. Sometimes we come in, and we're real good at hiding stuff. I am. I can tell you, a lot of times I come in, and I hide it. And, but, you know, inside, sometimes you're hurting. And not today, I'm not, but I'm just saying in the past. But, you know, we come in, and we're broken, and we don't know where we're gonna, what we're going to do. We don't know where we're going to go. We know that, hey, I can't fix it with my hands because it's out of my hands. I can't do it. Amen. So we got to give it to God. And you know what? He is the way maker. And I was thinking as Brother Richard was saying in the prayer room, hey, I, I need a place to live. God's going to make a way. He will make a way for you and for you. Amen. He's going to bring y'all out and he's going to do great things for you. And I want to sing this again. I want to sing even though even when I don't see it. He's working. We may not see it with our eyes, but God is working on our behalf. And I just want to say, ready? Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working.
Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. You know why he likes it? There's something about praise that ignites the anointing of God. Hallelujah, God. That song, The Waymaker. It's like God is working in you. Old things passed away. Behold, all things become brand new. Working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's what God's doing. Sometimes you wonder why God does things the way he does it. I, I don't know and don't, I don't quite understand. But I tell you what, he orchestrates everything about you and every plan. God has a plan A and he's got a plan B for everybody that's under the sound of my voice right now. And the thing about it, nobody escapes the plan. Now... You may choose to go an alternate, an alternate plan. But God has a plan for every one of you. Boy, it's quiet in here. Why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise right now? Because what I feel today that God is working, working out Working out. Does everybody know what workout is? Some of you guys and ladies that maybe lift weights and exercise, you're working out. But when you get in the spiritual end, you're working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. God's good. God ain't done. He's not done. 
He's just only beginning. The baptistry is warm. It's ready to put somebody down in Jesus' name for the remission of their sins. When you get baptized in Jesus' name, it's totally different than titles. When you get baptized in Jesus' name, you're taking upon his name and also you're remitting your sins before the Lord under obedience. And when you come up in the newness of life, you're changed, you're a changed person. All it takes is repentance and water baptism in Jesus' name and then God does the rest. The Holy Ghost does the rest. Amen. Give the Lord a good old hand clap of praise. I want you to sing that song again. I, I'm, I, I'm just I'm trying to find that vein right now, and it ain't there like I want it. The Waymaker. The Waymaker. Where's, where's my singer? The Waymaker. You, do you sing that? I think you do. <laughs> Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Lord, you're the Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Lord, you're the Waymaker, miracle worker. 
you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working and even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working and even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop
chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Justice, won't you come up for a second? Justice came to us. Come on up here. Turn around toward them. I want them to see you. Justice came to us about a couple months ago. Was it three months? How long have you been with us? Huh? Four months, actually. It's been... She started the book of, well, book of Acts, the Acts class, which is an uh, alcohol chemical treatment program. And uh, I remember when she started, I saw her like this. She was looking at me. and She would not take her eyes off of everything I said. And I knew at that moment God was beginning to work. Husband came before you, right? Husband came before you, and it's amazing. Nothing is accidentally with God. It's all on incident. And and, and I'm not going to go in depth, but it was something minor that got her to have to get involved with CPS. And it was a minor thing. It wasn't a major, okay? But that minor thing, God knew what it took to get her in the plan. Do y'all hear me? God knew what it took. It's like that cocoon. It struggles getting there. But if that cocoon knew what it was going to be before it was going to be, it wouldn't mind the struggle because it was going to become a butterfly. It was not going to stay in that cocoon forever. And I want to tell every one of y'all something. Stay right there. I want to tell every one of y'all something. You may be in a cocoon stage where you're doing nothing but wrestling, trying to get out of that thing. Okay? And some of you are in that stage. And God will keep you wrestling as long as you want to wrestle. But when you're ready to come out, when you come out, You're not going to be just a blob on the ground after that cocoon. You're going to come out of this thing flying. And you're going to be a beautiful butterfly. Everybody likes beautiful flowers. And it makes it even more beautiful if butterflies are all over it. Every summer, spring. We like that, don't we? She's become a butterfly. If you will see that you are the butterfly and not the cocoon, and though you have your struggles, you're coming out. She's coming out. Who in God's green earth would have thought just something minor would have got you in that class? But when it did, folks, I'm going to tell you all something. I'm going to tell on myself. I kind of put things aside. I didn't go by my notes as much. I just started speaking things in the spirit realm that I knew what I had to say in that class. I, I kind of treated it like a Sunday school class. And uh, without putting a lot of religion into it, you know, because you got to be real careful. But you can get the point across with God principles. Praise God. She's here today because... An accident happened on purpose. Give her a hand, would you? I love this lady. <laughs> she loves me as a pastor, too. Well, maybe, maybe it didn't whack this thing up too bad. But I'm glad that she's here in the house of the Lord, aren't you? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Let's all stand our feet. You know, I... I really don't have anything else to say today for some purpose. I mean, I could preach, you know, 
you know, preachers are like roosters. They can crow. You know, I, I've got a sermon, but uh, I'm not going to preach it today. Is there anybody that needs to have their sins remitted before the Lord today? Baptized in Jesus' name today. Is there anybody here? Come on. There's nothing like getting your sins remitted. Well, it looks like we've got a clean house. Clean house. <laughs> hey, I got a granddaughter that's going to back me with anything I say. As long as I tell her she's beautiful. Yesterday I was, I was uh, over at Amber's house and I caught her and, and Lena together, Caitlin and Lena together. I says, hey, we got to go on a date. I says, there's a third party that's going to go with us. You know, that's Ashlyn. So they're ready to go on a date. You know what? That's why I keep my kids. I love them. We just go on a date, and I carry them out, and guess what? Papa pays the bill. Papa pays the bill. So anyway, love your children, and uh, love people. Love people. Give people a chance. And I'll tell you what, if you do that, you'll go a long ways with God. Sister Juanita, I'm so glad to see you today. You've been faithful to God. Brother Ron, you as well. Praise God. Let's give them a hand again, would you? Now, this is informal, but I, I tell you what, you musicians did it today. Man, did you do it. Wow. Elena, I, I heard you sing today, and I, I didn't think that tough of a voice could come out of a little body like it did, but you're doing a great job. Josh, you're doing a great job. And David on them drums. Oh, my goodness. Look at him. Give him a hand, would you? <laughs> I love David. He knows I do. And oh, our leader. Oh, my God. Sister, you have improved 100% in everything you've done. You're just getting better and better. Let's give Sister Liz a hand, would you? I, 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 believe, I believe when people do good like this, I think they deserve a little hand of fellowship, praise God. And our guest, it's good to have every one of y'all today. Now, this is what I want. Informal. Everybody say informal. Go and shake somebody's hand and be friendly and love people. You'll go a long ways with them. And treat our guest. Treat our guest, would you? Treat our guest. Praise God. Hey, girl.